This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we lift his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come and rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> And Merry Christmas. It's got a few quick announcements for you this morning. Um, next Saturday, the 30th, we have our annual Taste of Wyoming. That will be held here at the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, that is an open invite to anybody who would like to come. Uh, so um, put that on your calendar. Uh, invite people. Uh, it's going to be a great time of fellowship. It will be a great meal. There will be a lot of fun stories told. Uh, and then a reminder again next week, we're going to run kind of the same schedule we're running today. No Sunday school, service starting at 10 a.m. Um, <coughs> this is going to be interesting today. I've caught that seasonal stuff that everybody is going through. So, um, Starting the week of January 7th, our life groups are going to start up. Uh, the Thursday night one, that's full. Uh, they, they've got about a dozen people already signed up for that. We have uh, Saturday morning from 9.30 to 11, and Wednesday afternoon from 1 to 2.30 that are also open. Uh, I'm going to pass the clipboards around for those. I would highly encourage uh, everybody to sign up for a life group. Uh, it's going to be an important part, especially going into the next series of the topic we're talking about and creating more of a conversation rather than just a lecture series. So I'm going to go ahead and pass those around. Uh, ladies, uh, next Bible study is going to start January 14th. You're going to work through the book called Pursuing Peace by Dr. Robert Jones of Southern Seminary. Uh, Dr. Jones is actually going to be in the Kendallville area in May talking on that topic at the annual Biblical Counseling Conference. So it um, be a great way to get you introduced to him and maybe get you geared up for possibly attending that conference in May. Is there any other announcements that I'm currently missing? I think it's pretty... Yes, next Sunday there's going to be a special communion to close service out. Um, I think that's it. I think it's kind of a light morning. So uh, welcome and Merry Christmas to everybody. I'll go ahead and pass these around. <laughs>
if you're not able to, continue to sit down. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. But she was greatly troubled at saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold, I am your servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. In those days, a decree was went out from Caesar's Augustus that the world should be registered. This were, was the first registration of Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be registered each to his own town, and Joseph also went up to up from Galilee, Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is also called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came to give birth. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, And suddenly there was an angel of multitudes with heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made it known, the thing that had been told concerning the child. And who, all who heard wondered what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard told to them. Rejoice, rejoice, I say, before the prophets told of the comings of the promised one, before Mary and Joseph responded in faith, before the shepherds spread the message of joy, before the angels talked about the everlasting peace, rejoicing from the coming of the Christ was done. We know this from John in chapter 8. Jesus told Pharisees and Abraham, rejoiced that he would see Jesus. Jesus' day, and he was glad. So again, I say rejoice. Tonight, with today we complete the Advent wreath of lighting of the Christ candle. Jesus is the light of the world, 
the light of the darkness cannot overcome. So we will light the candle today in remembrance of our Savior who brought light into the dark, the world who gives this light to those who believe in him and those who tell us to go and let our light shine. All right, let's pray. Dear Father God, we want to thank you for sending your Son into this world. We thank you that in him is light and that the light is the light of men. Father, we ask you to give us a rejoicing heart as long as that long to serve you. Lord, I encourage us this night, this day to take light and to let the shine of the whole world to see. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. busy people, and it's not always easy for us to be quieted, and as you say, for us to be still and know your God, and um, I just pray that in this season, you would give us moments where we are truly quieted and in awe of your plan to make a way for sinners like us to come to know you. Help us just to be in awe of it, Lord, this season. I'm sure he must have been surprised where this road had taken him. Never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. Standing at the manger, he saw with his own eyes the message from the angel come to life. And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with 
all the rulers in the world. Why here, inside this stable filled with hay, why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. To think of how it could have been if Jesus had come as he deserved. There would have been no Bethlehem, no lowly shepherds at his birth. But Joseph knew the reason love had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why here inside this stable filled with hay? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Oh, now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. This is such a strange way. A strange way. Such a glorious way to save the Good morning again, everyone. We're going to have a <clears throat> short Christmas Eve meditation this morning. We're going to be looking to Isaiah chapter 9. And it's short in comparison to what my typical Sunday messages are, so. I want to welcome you this Christmas Eve morning here to Burr Oak, and I would ask before we get into this meditation, if you would please just join me in prayer for a few moments. Father, what a special time of year it is, a time when our hearts are softer as we remember the great work that you have done. Lord, we ask your blessing on our message this morning and ask that your spirit be present amongst us and draw us in nearer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. If you want to follow along uh, in your own Bible or on your device, go ahead and pull it up now. If you're going to use one of the Blue Pew Bibles, it's on page 638, or you can follow along on the screen. Isaiah chapter 9. Let us hear the word of the Lord. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. 
But in the later time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior and the battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of the peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. What child is this that laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? We recognize this as the iconic opening line to the 19th century Christian hymn, Christmas Hymn by William Chatterton Dix, who penned these words to his 16th century English folk song. Through this song, Dix ponders the question of who is this child that Mary has given birth to. It is this very question that all of mankind still needs to answer today. So this morning, we're going to take some time and look at this question by considering the words of Isaiah. In the beginning, God had created the heavens and the earth, and God said, let there be light, and he saw that the light was good. At the end of the creation week, God created mankind, both male and female, and made a covenant with them that if they loved God and walked in obedience to him, that there would be a blessing that came from continuing to live within the light. Yet love is not something that can be coerced. For true love, obedience and submission to come, there needs to be the ability to choose not to. There needed to be the ability to choose darkness rather than light. And in their free moral agency, that was what the first man chose. So that by Isaiah's time, Isaiah could pen these words in verse 2 of our reading for today. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And by the choice of our first parents, the generations of mankind became separated from the light. This separation caused the darkness to be able to dwell within man's heart, causing him to look to his own strength and concerns, causing him to worship anything other than the one true God. Yet God's love for mankind was such that God would not leave man to his own devices. From the very beginning, God had a plan to reconcile man to himself, a plan that he progressively revealed to mankind a plan that had been shown through the different covenants that God made with mankind throughout history. But through these covenants, it was revealed that God wanted to bring mankind up out of the darkness and back into the light, that he wanted to replace their sufferings with joy. The God who is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, the holy God who extends mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression, he wanted to bring mankind up out of darkness and replace that which oppressed them with joy. Verses 3 through 5 today read, You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior and battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. See, the joy that was coming was not a temporary happiness, but a joy that comes after a long and hard-fought battle. 
a joy that comes after a period of anxious waiting, a joy that shall be everlasting without end, the joy that comes when a warrior can shed his battle clothes and arms and find rest, the joy that comes when the long-awaited harvest finally arrives, the joy that comes when a heavy burden is lifted off of your shoulders. This is a joy that the Lord was wanting for his people. Yet regardless of how Yahweh manifested himself to his people, they continued to run towards the darkness, believing the lies that it was telling them. Yet when man got himself into trouble, he would cry out to Yahweh, wanting salvation to come. And our God would bring it. He would raise up an individual to save the people. He would speak through individuals who would encourage others to come back to his ways and forsake the ways of the world. When the people wanted a king, Yahweh gave them a king to rule over them. Each and every step of the way, he continued to be there for mankind, proving his amet, his trustworthiness and steadfastness, proving that he was loyal to his hesed, his covenantal love for them. And as man grew more and more wicked, chasing further and further after the darkness, Yahweh continued to be faithful to his promises. He promised that there would be a seed of the woman to crush the head of the serpent. He promised to never again destroy creation through a flood. He promised an offspring that would birth a nation. He promised a son that would have an everlasting reign. Yet as the years and generations went on, man continued to turn from Yahweh and his ways to chase after the darkness. And after a thousand years of written record, a thousand years of witness to miracles, the raising of judges in times of trouble, the raising of prophets who gave the word, and the raising of kings to rule as a representative. Yahweh left his people with one message. To the prophet Malachi, he said, Behold, I am sending my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes, the rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. A day is coming when those who stand against will stand no more. A day is coming when those who have their faith in Yahweh will leap like calves from the stall. A day is coming, for, a day is coming that for some will be a glorious day of relief. A day is coming that for others will be a terrible day of judgment. A messenger will be sent beforehand because a day is coming when God will be amongst mankind. And then, after this message, things just went silent. For 400 years, things laid silent. Imagine the thoughts of the people. Where is God? When is he going to come through? Did he forsake us again? Did he leave us again? He has never been there when we needed him. I guess this is just life. You live once and you die. But God did not leave them or forsake them. For God began to break the silence. God sent his messenger Gabriel to proclaim that a son was coming to the barren womb. A son was given when there was thought no way for a child to come. And he was to be the earthly messenger that comes before the Lord. He was a sign of Elijah coming to prepare the way. 
And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before them in spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. But Yahweh was not done breaking the silence yet. Six months later, Yahweh again sends Gabriel out, this time to proclaim that a son would come from the virgin womb, the long-awaited sign. 700 years they awaited for this sign, the child to be born from the virgin's womb who would be known as Emmanuel. God is with us. And while God was beginning to break the silence, the collective still believed that he was distant. Anticipation was building with a few, before the majority, everyday life continued on. Until one night, until one night when Yahweh boldly broke through the silence with both the thundering sound of a multitude of singing angels and the cry of one tiny babe. Oh, what child is this that lays to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch their keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom the shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. The waiting is over, the silence is broken. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Take heart, find joy, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. God has broken the silence by entering into humanity. The seed that will crush the serpent's head has been born. Yet this is not where the story ends. And this is where the story cannot end. See, the birth of the promised child was only the beginning. There was still the issue of sin that needed to be paid for. There was the atonement for sin that still needed to take place. Dix captures this in his iconic Christmas hymn. If you would, please, pull out one of the hymnals and turn to page 180. And if you go to the third line down and look at the middle verse. Nails, spear shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. See, during the Advent season and Christmas time, we celebrate the coming of a baby. A baby who is the everlasting king. Yet that baby was born with one mission. To pay the price for the sins of mankind. To be the receiver of God's wrath against sin. Nail spear shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Jesus, the Son of God, who is the very essence of God, came to be the payment for your sin. But there's not a blind covering. This is a gift that you have to accept. You have to accept his lordship over your life. You have to believe and confess that he is Lord. And his lordship is not difficult. No, he is kind and loving. He is gentle and lowly. He is slow to anger and abounding a steadfast love. So what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? This is the king of kings that salvation brings. Let your loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise your songs on high. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. Would you please pray with me? Father, as we celebrate over the next couple of days the coming of your Son, let us be reminded that 
we all have to ponder this question. Who is he? What does he mean for us? Was he just a baby born in a manger? Was he just a man? Was he just a prophet? Or is he the son of God who came to die for mankind so that they could be reconciled to their creator? Father, I pray that for anyone here who hears this, that has not come to accept Christ, that in this season it would be the time that they would, that through your Holy Spirit conviction would fall on them and they would come to see him as the gentle and lowly Lord that he is, who is slow to anger and steadfast in love. Father, as Christ identified himself with those whose lives were in a mess and who were far from God, as he gave his life for all, help us, weak and imperfect as we are, to follow his example as we walk in the steps and rely on the power of Jesus. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So